Welcome to the State of the FES Center for 2023. And welcome to the people online. Welcome to everyone that's here. It's nice hearing everybody actually talking in person to one another. It's, uh, it's hard to interrupt that. And, you know, I was thinking just before I came in here, believe it or not, Hunter, this is my 12th State of the FES Center. It's been a long time, you know. I. Pardon? That's too big for him. <laughs> <laughs> so w w today we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about who we are. We're going to talk about what we've done. And we're going to talk a little bit about where we're going, okay, or where we could go. So we'll start with who we are. So what we have here are our vision and mission statements. And kind of the big vision is, We'd like to transform the way that rehabilitation is performed through discovery of fundamental principles and the development of novel effective treatments for rehabilitation and neurological disorders. Our specific way that we go about doing this is by develop interventions based on neurostimulation and, and on other kind of treatment modalities, therapy and, and uh, other uh, surgical um, techniques to replace or to compensate for function that has been lost due to these kinds of neurological disorders. We have a, an approach that we've had really since the, the very beginning. There's plenty of space over here. People are congregating in the back. So the FES Center as, a, as an entity Kind of our main functions are to attract and maintain top talent, you folks, right? So we work with our partners to do that, and I think we've been pretty successful over the years. We strategically guide research directions. We, we get together, we talk through where we need to go, what are the problems that have, will have the most impact, and obviously investigators are free to do what they like after that, but at least we try to provide guidance. And we work with our institutional partners, which I'll talk about in a minute, to cooperate with them. And, and we also develop investigator collaborations. I get lots of calls about people that are looking for investigators, and I try to make a match. We also try very hard to provide value to all of you. So added value, things that, that you don't get normally. So we have scientific support. We have professional development support. We have many kinds of mechanisms that augment the existing uh, mechanisms of, uh, of research support. So this is the FES Center. We're a consortium. We're funded by the Department of Veterans Affairs, Rehabilitation Research and Development Service. And we have our main offices over in the, in the, the Lewis Stokes uh, Cleveland VA Medical Center. Case Western Reserve University, where we are right now, is our academic partner for this endeavor. But we also have strong partners in Metro Health Medical Center, where there's a big, a big group doing rehabilitation. University Hospitals and Cleveland Clinic, which are more neurology, neuroscience-based. So we are a, um, we're funded by the VA, but we're really a consortium across the city. And we're a big consortium. So at an institutional level, these are our partners. At a day-to-day at a -day grassroots level, it's all of you. We are the people that come and, and, and work together uh, in the FES Center. I don't pay, we don't pay investigators really. We, we pay staff, but the rest of all of you are here because you want to be and we try to keep it that way. So just some quick statistics for this past year. We have 86 investigators. This year, there's two more scientists and clinicians. Last year, I think it was the other way around, but we have about an even split of clinical researchers, partners, 
and scientists. We have roughly 50 staff members. These are technical staff that work in your labs that uh, are therapists are, and we have an oper a very lean operations group uh, that work over from the VA. And all of you train many people. We have PhD students, master's students, postdoctoral students. I'll talk about the funding in just a second, but we have substantial funding. Congratulations to all of you. And uh, we have publications and I think the presentations, those are the ones that, that we can find out about. They're not usually reported very well, just saying. This is kind of, this is the executive committee. This is the leadership of the FES Center. So I'm the executive director. Ron Rickers, Ron Rickers is the medical director. Asaf Sheikh is the associate medical director. Cheryl, who I think you all know, is the director of operations. Chris Polium is our new director of strategic and industrial collaborations. And I saw Andy come in, where did he go? I think the first job he's gonna have is to simplify that, that title. We'll see. Anyway, we have uh, uh, 10 other members of the executive committee that come from um, different uh, professions, different disciplines. What did I do? Oh, I know what I did, sorry. And so we, we have surgeons and neurologists and engineers and scientists and translational people. We have a, a big balance across that. And we also have representation from all of our, our institutional partners to make sure that we're meeting what their goals are for our activities. I think I may have to do this. So, I'm gonna show a little video here, and it's about the heart and soul of the FES Center, so I'll just let it play. The Cleveland FES Center is where innovation meets aspiration. The mission is to use functional electrical stimulation and a number of other techniques and apply them to various neurological disorders and change the way the rehabilitation is done. Every single day, we challenge the limits of what neural technology can achieve. Functional electrical stimulation allows us to speak the language of the nervous system. FES has the potential to address a large variety of issues related to spinal cord injury, stroke, Parkinson's disease, dementia, and things of that nature. What really drives us is bringing innovative technology to the forefront that might actually make a difference in someone's lives. Life before functional electrical stimulation was depressing. I couldn't move anything below my shoulders and I couldn't feel. After functional electrical stimulation, every movement is a victory. Getting that privilege to reuse my hand again with my volitional thoughts is what has been so remarkable and such a blessing. Before FES, my left side was weaker. Now it's strengthening. After FES, you should feel more secure. Functional electrical stimulation is the key. It's unlocking potentials we once thought were completely unattainable. Functions that were once thought lost as a result of brain injuries can now be considered to be restored through this important tool known as functional electrical stimulation. Our goal isn't just scientific advancement. It's the betterment of lives. From pain management to movement restoration, the applications of functional electrical stimulation are vast and growing. Every day here in the Cleveland FES Center is about making the impossible more possible. We are more than an institution. We are a community and a beacon of hope. Functional electrical stimulation is what gets me excited and you know, eager to look forward. VA is supporting clinicians to do this type of research. It's not just about the technology. It really is about the people who are dedicated to advancing the research and the people who participate in the research studies. Together, we're not just performing research. 
We are transforming rehabilitation. Hmm. So while our partners show up here, you should give yourselves a round of applause. That's, a, it's, that's what that's the video shows. So you may have noticed, maybe, you, did you notice that? And at the end of the video, this, was our, this has been our logo for a, a while. And now we have a new logo. And I've already received some nice compliments about it. It says what we do, I think, very nicely, very uh, succinctly. And I'm, I'm very happy that it turned out this way. I want to thank uh, Rafa Saab and her team, both for the video and for the logo design. Uh, you did a fantastic job. This is really, really nice. Okay. So, what is it that we do? Uh, I think I'm going to move back over here. Functional electrical stimulation is not the only thing we do, but many of us do this. And it's small currents that we use in different ways to replace natural activation or modulate neural circuits to help uh, remediate uh, disorders. If you know what you're doing, and I think we know pretty well and we're learning, FES can speak the language of the nervous system. We can do it safely. We can, we can tell it what it needs to know. You can target precisely if you need to. And you can turn it on and off, and it, ha it can have fewer side effects than some, some, th some other techniques. Just about everything in your body can be influenced or controlled by the nervous system. So that means we can use this technique in many ways. And as you can see over there, there's many ways on, the, on, on this side. I'm pointing with my hand. Um, we do this in many ways. And we can, we can do motor restoration. We can look at sensory activity. We can do modulation of neural circuits. We can activate things, and we can inactivate things. So we have quite a toolkit, and we apply this to many things. I'm not going to go through these, but these are a lot of applications of, of functional electrical stimulation. Some examples of, of applications, contralaterally controlled um, FES, falling stroke, uh, Jamie and, and Michael Fu, upper limb motor and sensory and tra tra traumatic brain injury for Svetlana Pundik from tactile sensation and amputation, Dustin Tyler, modeling for Parkinson's disease, Asef Sheikh, Cameron McIntyre is now gone, but I think they still are collaborating. Um, you saw um, one of our, our more recent participant in the reconnecting the hand and brain, the hand and arm to the brain. That's Baloo and myself. And uh, gait function, that's following Parkinson's disease, offset shake. So for our last proposal, we sort of grouped our activities into, into five thrusts. Movement restoration, which is how the center started and is still a big part of what the center does. So it's things like, uh, you know, uh, using stimulation for paralyzed muscles to improve motor functions. It's for hand function, arm function, various uh, body uh, movement functions, breathing, coughing, for stroke, et cetera. Um, the other long-standing one has been pain and um, to mitigate pain. And it's in a renaissance period, I would say. We have investigators, Mike Moffitt is new now, and we have others that are working very strongly on pain, but we've had a, a good cohort for many years. We have uh, Carl Saab there in the back who is working on, on mechanisms and other, you know, other topics related to pain. Brain health is kind of a, of a smorgasbord of, of applications, but it's things like Parkinson's disease, movement disorders, um, traumatic brain injury, stroke, and autonomic system, which is, you know, 
everything in your body that you don't think about that is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So it's respiration and digestion and many, you know, many other applications. This has been on the, on the scene for a number of years now, not long, but, but long, fairly long. And still, it, it has some traction. Finally, we, we have a translation and clinical dissemination group that helps all of you move your discoveries into products or into clinical trials or techniques. So getting our activities from the lab out into the, the world. So those are our, our five thrusts. We have some cores. We do discovery science. So not everybody does development. We do basic discovery. We have tools. We develop new tools, all kinds of tools, hardware tools, software tools, visualization tools, many different things. And we have a brand new bioethics, not so brand new anymore, but pretty new bioethics core. And I'm looking for the folks that are part of, oh, yep, so we have, we, we, we have some of our, and I saw Mark Elizio come in too. Oh, there he is. Okay, so we have, we have a core, and please make, take advantage of this. I mean, they want to be our partners, not just say, is this okay? You know, it's more they have great ideas about how to make your studies better and studies that they could do with your help, okay? So please seek them out. Um, we have a lot of partners around the community that have been developed over the years. Tech transfer, at, 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 especially at, at, at Case. Um, the VA team is another center that um, we have here in, in Cleveland that is educational for doing translation. Anybody that's in the VA can, can apply to be in that program and you learn a lot about how to go about translating things within the VA and in general. Uh, we have regulatory support. We, we do in, outreach to the industry, um, which, boy, I say this too often. It's really important, so I have it up there twice. I need, I need to change the slide, sorry. Anyway, we do a lot of things. A lot of it is science that is done by all of you, and some of it is, is uh, sort of administrative that we provide support for. I'm going to move on. So our research is highly multidisciplinary. We have people from many walks of life that work together doing creative new things, and I think that's one of the reasons we've been successful. The clinical applications are rapidly expanding for neural stimulation in general. You know, I talked about a few of them, but um, the autonomic nervous system, pain, you know, optical stimulation has different properties than, than electrical stimulation, which are very advantageous in some cases. We have always done as a center for 32 years, maybe, is it 32, 33? Anyway, Cheryl and I disagree when it started, Hunter. When did it start? All right. <laughs> she says 1991, I say 1990. Anyway, we've been around for a long time. It was submitted in 90, funded in 91. Okay. So, we've been around for 30 plus years, how's that? And um, we have always done first in human feasibility trials. It's kind of a, of a special thing that many research groups stop short of. They come up to that and expect somebody to pick it up for them. We move things through, usually, hopefully. We're pretty vertically oriented or organized, so we do fundamental discovery, like I said before, through development, through feasibility testing, and hopefully on to, to clinical trials or translation out into the world. That's our goal and we're still working very hard. We've had some six really great success stories there. We develop neural interfaces and we develop neural devices. We do modeling and simulation of various kinds. We do neural modeling. We do uh, musculoskeletal modeling. 
and others probably as well. We know how to interact with the intact nervous system. You just don't always overpower everything. You sort of cooperate with what is the remaining functional uh, components of the nervous system. And we know how to combine neural stimulation with other kind of treatment modalities. I mentioned these before. It could be a pharmaceutical agent. It could be therapy. It could be a surgical procedure. There's a long list of, of, of treatment modalities that we cooperate with as well. Take advantage of both. The, the goal is improving the, the, the situation for the person and not uh, just demonstrating technology. These are, I'm not, I'm not gonna go through this line by line, but this was in our center proposal from last time. And it's the kinds of, of support that the FES Center provides to investigators. So if we have administrative support, so they oversee the fiscal in the center and VA grants, we develop technology, um, we have facilities in several locations that, that investigators can use. We've worked very hard over the years to build research capacity is, is you folks. How do we recruit people here and get you to stay here and work it with us? We have a contract to do regulatory um, support. We have agreements about clinical trial support. Like I said before, we've established a bioethics core. Um, we have statistical support. We have a medical administrator who's also here somewhere. I saw her, I saw her. Oh, there she is, Emily. And we, I noticed, again, too late to change this, that we also offer a professional development education opportunity. So we've partnered with Weatherhead Business School. If you, if this, this is really for investigators, if you want to go and learn about how to be, a, you know, improve your leadership skills, your management skills for your lab. It's really a, a, a good opportunity. And I don't know, something like 18 people have done this already. So this is, this is really a, a good thing. Okay, dissemination. So how, how, does, how does the world know what we do and how do we figure out what the world is doing? So we have what's called the neural prosthesis. Now it's a webinar because we do it live and we do it uh, via a webinar. And these are the speakers that we've had. These are external speakers and we've had over the last year or so. And you can see they come from a variety of, of locations with a variety of expertise. Probably more interesting is who's coming. So we have a pretty strong roster of, of speakers for the rest of this year. You'll notice we're taking January off. Um, nobody wants to come to Cleveland in January. And number two, we're gonna have a, a research retreat in January. So that, that's, what, that's how we're gonna do January. But we have some basic motor control people, uh, non-human primate physiologist, surgeon, uh, another engineer who does neural devices and, and neural applications, anesthesiologist who does some really cool work. If you've never heard of Emory Brown, you should, you should check that out. And also another um, engineer who is in, in the neural, uh, or in the sort of the rehabilitation space. So this is, this is, going to be a very nice uh, run here. We also, so that was for external speakers. We also have an internal mechanism, which we call First Tuesday, because it's on the first Tuesday of every month. And we have it at the Fairmount, which is on, whoops, I moved it too quick, which is on uh, Cedar Road and Fairmount there. And this is more for concept reviews. You have an idea that you want to you want to you want to talk about. Um, 
you just got some cool results and you want to get people's impressions. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a presentation and kind of a discussion. So I, I strongly urge people to do this. It's very valuable. That's how we help each other. Okay, this is how we, you know, get our, our information to others and get feedback from them. So there's some from the past. These are all from the past, actually. They include, you know, th these are local you know, speakers, people in our group. And um, we have a couple more coming up in November and December. It's easy to remember, first Tuesday. Okay? So how do we get messages beyond our own messages? Like, obviously, you folks go out and talk at other places and go to conferences and interact with people. But the FES Center itself, first of all, we have a, a web page, fescenter.org, which has lots of information on it. Um, that might be a good place to start if you don't know much about the FES Center. Go there and take a look. But we also have a lot of social media kinds of, of activities. So we do Facebook. I almost said Twitter, but it's X. Uh, YouTube and um, LinkedIn. So this, these are just statistics. People look at this. So if you want to do, if you want to get, your, get word out about something, take advantage of this. We do these things. We have people that look and see what, what it is have happen, has happened, but we don't always know what you've done unless you tell us, okay? So if you want to get it out, tell us. We'll, we'll get it out for you, or you, we'll, we'll help you get it out, okay? Okay, accomplishments. We had a good year, very good year, both collectively and uh, individually. So first we'll start with the collective. So mostly you, with a little bit of the FES Center, had about slightly less, whoops, I keep going the wrong direction, $28 million in funding last year. It's fantastic, okay? That's the most ever. So we've recovered from our pan pandemic kind of law. And it comes, I'll just do the whole thing. 94% of that went to you guys, to the investigators. 6%, you can see it up here, is for the center. That's pretty good sort of uh, leveraged funding number there. Um, and it comes from many different places. We get a lot of money from the VA and NIH, that's true, but there's also DOD and foundations. So we're doing great in terms of funding. We can do better, and so we're gonna, we're, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. In terms of translation, we're also doing quite well. So there are 14 patent uh, invention disclosures and 48 patent applications and 20 patents issued in the past year to you folks. We don't do that. We can help you get there if, if, if you need help. A lot of the uh, institutions have you know, their technology transfer or innovation um, departments that take care of that, but we can connect you to them if, if you feel like you need that. Okay, now individuals. Kevin Kilgore named a senior member of the National Academy of, In of Inventors. I'm gonna go quickly here because there's a lot. Kim Anderson Ayersman was elected, or is going to be inducted into the National Academy of Medicine. That's a big deal. So congratulations to, uh, to Kim. That's fantastic. And guess what? I didn't make this slide. Cheryl did. I received a Faculty Distinguished Research Award at Case recently. John Che. Who, who was appointed the Senior Vice President and Chief Academic Officer of the Metro Health System and Senior Associate Dean for Metro Health uh, for Case Western Reserve University. So that's also a big deal, so congratulations to John. Asif Sheikh uh, was awarded an endowed chair 
the Penny and Steven Weinberg Chair in Brain Health at University Hospitals. The FES Center reaches out to the veteran communities in multiple ways. The, there's the wheelchair, Buckeye wheelchair games, go to conferences that, um, where we display and are open to where, when, when people with disabilities can come and talk and, and uh, find out what we do. So we, we, we visit several of these uh, conferences. So we reach out and, and try to get feedback from our, the veterans. The first in human, I talked about this before, high frequency nerve block. So this is Jamie Knudsen, Neoy Badra, and Kevin Kilgore. It's really great to see that. I know Jamie's here. Maybe Kevin's online and Neoy's online, I don't know. But um, it's great to see this happen. I mean, it's been in development for a while, and I, I'm glad to see that it's moving along. Dennis Bourbeau, who's in the back there. He was, given, he was awarded a merit review from the VA electrical rectal stimulation to promote bowel emptying after spinal cord injury. Is the second one just a description or is that another award? Okay. <laughs> well, if it is, congratulations. Whoops, not that. Tony DeMarco and Chris Kowalski ha have been, have, have started now a multi-center clinical trial for spinal cord stimulation to restore cough. Again, from Metro. Jamie Knudsen, again, was awarded a, uh, uh, I think this is, oh, it's in a controlled, uh, contralaterally controlled FES multi-site clinical trial from, from NIH. Svetlana Pundik was, was awarded a, a VA merit review on brain connectivity changes with spinal cord stimulation, treatment of chronic pain. Okay. Blue Adjaboy and Dustin Tyler and Emily Gratchik, uh, we're on 60 Minutes. Did you all see that? It was on twice. They made the summer reruns even. This was a very impactful, very nice piece that they did on the, on the, the reconnecting the hand and arm to the brain study. Dustin's was a, not about that, actually. It was about the amputation, am, amputee uh, sensation and motor control. Yep. Blue again. So Blue was featured in the New York Times. They had an article about his work, um, again, about the, the reconnecting the hand and arm to the brain. So that's also a big deal. We're getting good press. You got it, you're doing, you're doing too well. David Cunningham and Jamie Knudsen were awarded an NIH R01 for TDCS during contralaterally controlled FES for upper arm, upper extremity hemiplegia. And perfect score, okay? You don't get that very often. At least I don't, so uh, <laughs> um, that's really fantastic. Tina Vrabeck also was awarded an NIH R01 for bioelectric monitoring and neuromodulation of the heart. So that's fantastic. Congratulations, Tina. Dennis Borbo again. Brave Award. So this is uh, bringing research advancements to veterans, for veterans to everyone. So this is for technology trans uh, sort of translation. I'll just put it that way. Andy Cornwell led again this year a neural design entrepreneurs workshop. This brings together people that are sort of advanced degree students and uh, young professionals to help them learn about how, how to, again, how to translate their, their work out into the world using the biodesign method. Projecta Josie uh, was named uh, a Parkinson's I got to remember the, the uh, yeah, visiting research award from the Parkinson's uh, Foundation. Congratulations, uh, Prajakta. Pollock Gupta was named the Forbes 30 under 30 for Cleveland. Also, really cool. It's, this is great stuff. 
Okay, maybe we give a hand to all the awardees. <laughs> Okay, the future. That's what this thing's for. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so we have some opportunities. Centrally in Washington, the VA Office of Research and Development is reorganizing. I hope this can be considered and turn out to be a, an opportunity. Okay, there are some opportunities, I think, for some of us. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a minute. We need to do strategic planning. We did one last year. It was very good, but we need to follow up. There's, it's a very dynamic time. Like I said, the VA is going to reorganize. There's lots of opportunities for larger kinds of pro programmatic grants. So what, I, what I'd like to do is make sure that the FBS Center can financially and uh, intellectually invest in strategic areas of need. What are the things that we should be doing, that, things that need to be done, and what will it take to get there? Okay, and how can the FBS Center help leverage some of these things? I'd like to see more partnering with our consortium members in areas of mutual interest. I've had several discussions with some of our partners. It's not done yet by any means, but find topics, uh, applications that are important both to us and to our strategic partners and sort of co-invest in some new, ac new activity. We have to think a little bit about the FES Center structure. You know, we're kind of uh, sprawling, shall I say, and is that the best way to do this? So how do we structure the FES Center so that it works most effectively? And how do we distribute the leadership? There are programmatic funding opportunities that probably most of you are aware of. There's U mechanisms at NIH. Obviously, they've been around for a while. There's lots of new ones coming out all the time. Um, there's, there's many of them have to do with translation, too, if you're interested in that. So um, ARPA-H, I, I say starting up. It's kind of started up. They're making awards, but they're not on their feet yet, really. Um, they, they are making big awards. They need to spend money, they need to show success. So I strongly urge teams of people to get together and talk about areas where you can be successful, where maybe the FES Center can help, you know, administratively, connection-wise, whatever. Uh, I would also urge you to look to outside partners or other, otherwise you probably won't be successful. These are seen as consortia you know, from many locations. So I think that's what I say here. We can assist in strategic planning, helping put people together, um, all the way, you know, through the assembly of the, of the proposals. I know our institutional partners have some of that, but if you've ever submitted a giant programmatic grant, it's never enough, right? So we, we, can, do, we, we can help. Back to the VA reorganization. So I have a, just two slides here, just so you, this is, there's many more details. There's a number of things that are not worked out yet. Um, things are still evolving. It'll be in place though in a year or so, a little bit less than a year. So um, both uh, myself and Ron Triolo are on a group to work on the rehab side of this reorganization. So, whoops, wrong one. So this is the way things have been done organizationally within the Office of Research and Development for 20 plus years. So most of us are down here in the rehab, rehabilitation, research and development service. Um, but there's also one on basic science. 
one on clinical science, and one on health services. Okay, so this is how they've been, they've been sort of divided. And the concern is that it's become very siloed, that these different areas, I'll just go forward. This is an example that, that has been given at one of the meetings I was at, where traumatic brain injury, suicide prevention, and behavioral health are done by basic science, by clinical science, by health services, and by rehab. And they're overlapping and uncoordinated. And so the idea then is to coordinate them, okay, and to reorganize into something that looks more like this. So there's, a, there's one over, overarching um, uh, entity, ISRM, Investigator Scientific Review and Management. There's a panel that includes these folks and people from these folks that integrates the research activity so that um, you, you're not duplicating things, you're not you know, that th there's some progression from basic to clinical to uh, rehab. So uh, you might, I I've circled these, whoops, man, I'm. So to TBI, suicide prevention, and behavioral health show up as specific entities. And then there's two kinds of entities here. This will be the last point. There are what are called broad portfolios. This is, would be more like an investigator-initiated um, proposal that is there now that talks to one of their priorities. But it's your idea, and it's your direct, you know, you, you come, it could be different than, than what they've decided are their top priorities. But there are also things called actively managed portfolios, and these are more, if you like, more like a DARPA or an ARPA-H, where there are specific topics like uh, pain, and, you know, opioid overuse disorder, like TBI, like suicide prevention. And these would receive, they would give out proposals all along the spectrum of, of, these, uh, of these topics. And they're gonna be managed and they're gonna be like the program officer's gonna have a certain amount of money and they're going to say, well, I would like to get rid of the pain problems in, 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 the, in the VA. And how am I gonna best do that? So it's a more general question, right? So if many things fit under that, right? So like I said, just to give you an idea, they're gonna reorganize the services. That's, that's a done deal. Um, exactly what goes into, this would be most of the things that are in our R&D right now, the rehab research and development. And that's, that's where the centers would be, for example. Um, it's not clear where things like career development awards and, and that, that, that may be a separate entity. There's a whole giant tree of these things that have to do with how the administration is gonna be done, but figured that wasn't relevant today. Okay. We're reaching the home stretch. So COVID came, pandemic, shutdowns, everybody catching up. So I'm going to go through a bunch of service recognition, years of service awards for people. And I already know they're out of date because mine's out of date. But um, I'll just, I'll go through each one and we will maybe give applause for each group. Some of the groups only have one people, one person. So Dennis Johnson, 35 years. So Dennis, if you're out there, thank you very much for your service. He retired during the, during the pandemic. 30 years. Ron Hart, Kevin Kilgore, and Mike Keith. I stand by myself again, I guess, huh? <laughs> I, know, I know this isn't right because my 30th uh, 
thing was this past summer. So, uh, <laughs> um, Karen Brooks, Ken Gustafson, and Don Taylor, 20 years. Uh, Blue Edge Boy, Cheryl Dudek, Buddy Dunger, Jessica, Mc Jessica McCabe, Melissa Schmidt, and Peg Peggy Skelly. 15 years. It only seems like 50, Baloo. Um, huh? <laughs> Dennis Bourbeau and Jessica Jarvella, 10 years. Congratulations. That might be it. If you've been here late, uh, more recently than that, good for you. <laughs> um, okay. This is, these are my takeaways, and we're almost done here. So the opportunities. Well, first of all, how couldn't you have opportunities without that kind of a logo calling you through the door? <laughs> um, so... We're funded for four more years, so there's opportunity there. We have funds each of those years that we can spend to prepare for the future. Okay, that's why I want to do strategic planning. Like I said before, I really want to enhance connections with our institutional partners. And you can look at this in a kind of a, I don't know, a, a, a financial way and say, well, maybe we can get them to co-invest in us, but we want to co-invest in them too. So this is really going to be a partnership. I don't, I don't see it as a grab for money. We have to do research strategic planning. We, we've done it. We did it. We did one last year. We had, you know, we did a lot around the submission of the proposal. These proposals, you got to think ahead and you got to have things ready. You can't just say, well, in the next five years, I'm going to do this. You have to say, over the last three years, we moved in this direction. Okay. So, how about this? A new name for our center? Wow. Crickets. <laughs> We've been talking about it, you know, for maybe, I don't know, 20 years. But more recently, we talked a little bit more about it. People do a lot more than functional electrical stimulation. So you'll notice that our logo sort of reflects that. We say what we do. So do we change our name? Other places have. You know, think of the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. It still pains my heart that that's not called the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. That's where I did my PhD. Um, Roy Cooper changed the name of his center. Twitter is now X. We have at least that much visibility, don't we? I think we can do at least that well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a question mark. I don't know what we'll do. I mean, we're, we have great name recognition for the FES Center. Say what? We can do Z or something. Okay. Or maybe A, triple A. Um, and like I said before, I think we need to talk about how the, how, how the FES Center can be more effective in terms of its structure and the leadership within that structure. Okay. That's it. This is this is you folks and our research areas. And uh, I believe what's next, Cheryl. Well, thank you for coming today and, and putting up with me. I actually went through 61 slides in 50 minutes. So.